Good morning to each and every one. Am I clear to you at the back? Can you hear me? Good morning to each and every one. Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one. To our online viewers and listeners, welcome to Ebenezer Community Alliance Church. Celebrating our Thanksgiving and Christmas celebration. Although it's not the same as the usual celebration we had in the past, but today we praise and thank the Lord that we are able to celebrate it face to face. I remember it must have been more than a year now. Our theme for the Thanksgiving this morning is the family of Christ. Now, who are the family of Christ? Of course, you and me and all the people around the world who believe and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Now, thanksgiving in the Bible means to respond to God's goodness and grace with gratitude. Now, giving thanks in the Old Testament means raising your hands to God in rat, rat, gratitude, saying thanks. It makes a lasting impact. Now the psalmist's heartfelt prayers and grateful worship were preserved in the book of Psalms. Though there are 150 Psalms in the Bible, these two verses reflect a message of thankfulness found in Psalm 9 verses 1 to 2. And it says, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praise. Praises of your name, O Most High. You know, we will never able to finish expressing our gratitude to God for all God's wonderful deeds in our lives. But we can start with a sincere thank you through our prayers. And the greatest thing that we thank God for is for giving Jesus to our lives, to our family. And our blessed hope is the coming again of Jesus Christ to take us to his mansions in heaven as he has promised that in the Bible. Now this morning, I would like to title the sermon, Set Your Hope Fully upon the grace and what is this grace it's the second coming of the lord jesus christ and that is our hope and let us hope fully on the coming of christ now this morning let us study a portion of scripture found in the first book of peter chapter 1 verse 13 that tells us to hope fully of the coming of Christ. Now let us read again together First Peter chapter 1, verse 13, using the King James Version. Therefore, geared up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now first, let me start by giving you a short background on the book of this, I mean, on this chapter before for us, for us to have a better understanding. Now the author of this is no other than the Apostle Peter, a disciple of Jesus. He was known as the impulsive, hasty, rush disciple who denied Jesus three times 
that he knew Jesus during the ministry of Jesus on earth for three years. He was one of the closest disciples of Jesus aside from James and John. He wrote this book about 64 AD and his intended recipients are the Christians scattered throughout the Roman world. These Christians who were suffering from trials, various trials and afflictions. It's a general letter to the young churches who were converts to Christianity. They were a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. In verse 1 to 12 of chapter 1, Peter is telling the Christian the value of their salvation. He is telling us, you are saved. You are already saved. You are already born again through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in verse 3. And he said, we rejoice even though we experience various trials or difficulties so that our faith will be more precious and be found worthy of the praise glory and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ during his revelation in verse 7. Now, revelation of Jesus Christ means and refers here to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, Peter is stating the facts in verses 1 to 12 of chapter 1 that we are already saved because of Jesus. And then suddenly he shifts the tone of his conversation from reality to response from indicative to imperative starting in verse 13. After stating the fact of our salvation the implication here since we are now God's chosen priest, royal priesthood, holy nation, and called out to declare the gospel, he now changes his and says, therefore, beginning in verse 13. Now the word therefore is an adjunctive adverb. The same adverb being used by the word finally or however. In other words, when you use the word therefore, this means this is signaling and a consequence or a result. In this scenario, Peter is saying in verses 1 to 12, and now you are Christians. You are Christians. You are saved. You are now children of God. As a result, this is what you should do. He begins by giving a command. Looking at the scripture that we just read earlier in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, it seems to be Peter is giving three commands in succession, which are geared the Lloyds of your mind, be sober and rest upon rest your hope fully upon the grace. It seems that these three commands were clumped in one verse. But let's do further analysis. Let's try to look at the other translations in the Bible, like the ESB, or the English Standard Version, or the commonly used New International Version, regarding verse 13. Now try to analyze and read with me carefully. Let's go first to ESB. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded. Now, here is the command. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to NIV. NIV says, therefore, with minds that are alert 
and fully sober, which means since our mind are geared, He gives this command. And what is this command? Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming. Now, both in ESB and NIV, it is clear that the main command is only one. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the other two prior two commands, which are prepare your mind and be sober-minded, are subordinate commands. In other words, these two subordinate commands are ways and means how to achieve the main command, which is set your mind fully on the grace. In verse 13 of the New King James Version, it looks clump. In other words, it looks like three commands given in succession. Gear your mind, be sober, and set your heart, rather, set your hope on the grace. But ESB and NIB clearly shows that the main command is set your hope fully upon the grace. And the first two, which are, ge which are geared your mind and be sober, are too specific, too specific to arrive to the first command, which is set your hope fully on the grace. Now, Peter is saying that these two subordinate commands will help us set our hope on the grace to be brought to you. Therefore, girding up the loins of your mind and being sober, these two are preliminaries or conditions or means which desired perfecting the Christian hope to be sought and attained. Now let's go first to the main command. What's the main command? The main command in verse 13 is fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you see the word hope, when you speak the word or say the word hope, it is something that you are wishing for to happen. And you are not sure if it is going to happen. For example, we are hoping that this pandemic will end up sooner so that we will be able to go back to our work. We will be able to have a gatherings, bigger gatherings. We are hoping that this pandemic will end sooner for those who are getting married on December so that we will have more than 200 guests. We are hoping. But here, the Apostle Peter is talking about a different kind of hope. If you notice in verse 13, Peter says, set your hope completely on the grace at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Other translations would say, fix your hope fully on the grace at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, what is this hope that Peter is talking about? It means that the hope is not about wishing things to happen. That's what Peter is, is saying. He is saying this kind of hope is certain and it will happen because that's what the Bible is saying. That hope is our inheritance with Jesus Christ. It's the blessed hope that we have been waiting for, which is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that hope is for all Christians. This hope 
is that is the recognition that in Christ we found fulfillment of the Old Testament promises. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 5, it says, For we, through the Spirit of faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. And the hope of righteousness is the Lord Jesus Christ forever upon His return to earth. Now there is an interesting word. A word after hope. And that word is fully or completely. Why not just say, set our hope on the grace? Why did Peter have to say, why set our hope fully on the grace? And separate the words hopefully to hope fully. Now there are two, these are two different words. Hopefully and hope fully. Simply because it's possible and common for us to function as one, we place our hope partially on grace and partially elsewhere. We are prone to placing our hope to our own good deeds. Some of us think that doing good, going to church, giving our tithes and offerings, never miss prayer meetings, giving alms to the poor, are more than enough to get accepted to go to heaven when Jesus Christ returns. To others, we set our hope on our spouse, we hope on our children, perhaps waiting for them to go abroad, we set our hope to our pastor or even our president. We hope and campaign for the new president to bring glory to our nation. And that president will bring a stop to corruption and poverty. The question is how many presidents did we have in the past? It's all promises. But not when we set our hope on Jesus. When we set our hope on Jesus, when he comes back, or our misery and tragedy that happened to our lives will be gone. Our hope is not on the president. Our hope is not on the government. But our hope is on Jesus Christ. Yet others will place their hope on wealth a bank account or a career. When we have a stable job or having a big account, we thought and we think that we are ready for the future. We, and when we have savings in the bank, we thought we are ready for economic crisis. We say we are ready when we retire, we have enough funds. But you see, when we say we hope in Christ, but we hope, what we really hope is not fully on Christ, but we also hope in others too. But here Peter is saying hope fully and nothing in between. You hope on Christ for certain our inheritance will come when Jesus returns. Now, Peter is speaking to Christians who are experiencing trials and afflictions here. And he's telling to them, you Christians, Jews and Gentiles, that includes us, put your hope, place your hope fully on Christ. For that day, because that day will be filled with trials and sorrows but full of pestilence on this day, full of pestilence, full of plagues, different variants of COVID-19 come one after the other. Now we, are, we have already, we also have a thread of an ongoing coming of Omicron. They say 500 times more infectious than the Delta variant. 
They come one after the other. They are more intelligent than our scientists. They change their face every second, every minute, every day. But Peter is saying all these afflictions and plagues will be gone when Jesus returns. All our sorrow will turn into joy. All kinds of pain will be gone. And this hope is only for Christians who are born again. Those who have been regenerated. Those who believe and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord when Jesus returns. The Apostle Paul is having his blessed hope and listen to his hope to depart and to be with Christ which is far better than anything we have known in this world there is a heaven and there is a home and there is Jesus Christ there that's our hope now the question we ask how are you going to fix or set your hope fully on the grace. How? Now, here is the how. And Peter says it with the subordinate commands in verse 13. And there are two important preliminaries and conditions. And Peter specifies two ways. Preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded. Now, let's look at it one by one. First, subordinate command. Prepare your minds for action or gear the loin of your mind in the New King James Version. Now, the, the, the word phrase, your, the word fra I mean, the phrase, prepare your minds for action can be translated literally as girding up the loins of your mind as translated by the King James Version. Now it's the practice, it's a reference to the practice of preparing for battle. Now the ancient people, they wore long robes, which would have hampered their ability to fight. Now before going to battle, they bound they bound their ropes to the waistline to allow for freedom of motion. Now it would be foolish to go to battle if their clothing inhibiting or restricting their movement. Now, and Peter is using the same analogy. He is letting his hearers know to rightly place your hope. You have to fight the first battle which is the mind. You have to prepare the mind for you to be able to set your hope. Now, the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. Its function is mainly to control everything in the body from thinking to movement it performs higher functions like interpreting touch, vision, hearing, speech, as well as reasoning and emotions. When we talk about the cerebrum, we talk about our minds. Our mind is the gateway to our heart. Our desires come from our heart, but the mind can change it. That's how strong the mind is. Peter is saying it's the believer's mind and must be ready for, for war, not only our heart. How do you prepare your mind? Here's another question. How do you prepare your mind? How do you gear up your mind or your loin, your mind? Now it's by being ready. Now, how do you get ready? Now, here are the following three principles for us to know 
how to get our mind ready. First, by abandoning sinful thoughts. Sin starts with our mind. Evil or sinful thoughts comes before our sinful actions. Do you agree? The origin of an evil action is found in the mind. In other words, action is just the product of our mind, product of our thoughts. So before an act of murder takes place, a thought of murder has already happened. The same with adultery, fornication, or theft, and so on. This is exactly what happened to King David when he committed the sin of adultery. He was tempted with his mind, with the thought of adultery first, which he chose to accept and committed the act of adultery. Thoughts can be evil and sinful. And Peter is saying here, for you to set your hope fully on the grace of the coming of Jesus Christ, you have to prepare your mind. Satan will attack our minds and fill it with doubts, deceits, and lies. A sinful doubt or a sinful or doubtful mind will inhibit our hope. That is why Peter is telling us to gear the Lord, the loin of our mind. And the mind is so strong and it can dictate our action if we don't abandon sinful thoughts. Second, set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things on earth. When we set our minds on earthly things, like what the world has promised us with temptations, entertainments, and temporal happiness, it will inhibit, it will inhibit us from setting and fixing our hope to the grace of Jesus Christ on his return. I heard a story of a man. He was praying. He said, Lord, do not come yet. Because I built a house in Singapore, I want to enjoy and enjoy my life together with the pleasure and beauty before you come. Our mind slips away from above and when we get involved on earthly things and we find it difficult to release. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor wrath destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. My friends, earthly treasures is often like that. It can be lost, it can be stolen, or even squandered. It can be lost in investment, or even in monetary market over which you have no control. But the heavenly treasures we have is Jesus. And we cannot lose it. We cannot lose him. A restored relationship with God and the promise of eternal life. That is why Jesus told us to store up treasures in heaven. Many times we forget the blessings and promises we have through our adoptions and sons and daughters of Jesus. 
That is why Peter is emphasizing the mind. Because if we set on things above, then we will not overlook our hope on the grace of the coming of Jesus Christ. Third and last, geared your mind with the truth of the Word of God. Geared your mind with the truth of the Word of God. There is no better way to fill your mind more than reading or, or reading and meditating on the words of God. Filling your minds with the Word of God. Studying and meditating. Not only reading the Word of God helps us understand and apply in our lives. It is sad to know that we only spend few minutes on reading on the Word of God, but we spend the whole day in Facebook, YouTube, video games without getting any tired. We don't feel sleepy when we are there on Facebook, when we read, the, when, when we are in YouTube, but just few minutes on reading the Word of God, we fall asleep. It is sad to know. In 2 Timothy 3.15, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, And that from childhood you have known the secret writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The secret writings that gives wisdom. Reading the Word of God studying and meditating on it will help us set our minds on the hope fully on the grace of the coming when the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because for certain the Bible says we will have an inheritance when Jesus Christ return the Word of God as we read and meditate on it will help us abandon our doubts evil thoughts abandon our evil desires the word of god the bible will not only help us prepare our minds but will also do the following in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word of god is living and active and sharper than two-edged sword even penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart. And in Psalms 119, verse 105, Your word, the Bible, is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God, the Bible is not only active to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart, but it is also a light unto our path. It will set and fix our eyes and our minds unto Jesus, our blessed hope. The second subordinate command is sober. Be sober. Now Peter also notes that setting our hope fully on Christ requires a second subordinate command, which is mental preparedness, sober-mindedness. Sober means not affected by alcohol or drunk. The opposite of soberness is drunkenness. Peter is not saying do not get drunk or abstain from wine. But Peter is saying do not get intoxicated with worldly things. If one is not sober, the mind is intoxicated or filled with worldly things. Just like when you get drunk. When you get drunk with wine, it changes the mind. It becomes dried out. Just imagine what a drunk person 
will do. His perception is obstructed. He can't think clearly, nor he can govern his desires for action. He is a danger to himself. He is a danger to others. He is unpredictable, unreliable, unable to be swayed by wise counsel. 90% of our vehicular motor accident we have in the emergency room is due to alcohol. Peter is saying here, if we want to set our hope fully on Christ, we must be fully attuned to the things of Christ with great seriousness. Do not let your heart drink things that will make you insensitive to the glory of God. Avoid things that desensitize you from the glory of God. For example, pornography. When you get addicted to pornography, it fills your mind like an alcohol. It desensitizes your mind. You get intoxicated with lusts. It desensitizes our heart and mind for the glory of God, thus preventing us to set our hope fully upon the grace. In summary, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, contains one command. Set your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in the same verse 13, Peter is proposing ways and means on how to achieve this command by giving two subordinate commands. First, prepare the loins of your mind. And to achieve this first subordinate command, you can do the following. Abandon evil thoughts or sinful thoughts. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. And third, gear your mind with the truth of the word of God. And the second subordinate command is being sober. As we celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas today, let's thank God for sending us the greatest gift of all. And that gift is Jesus. He left heaven to become a man, died and rose again, and is, and is God living with us and among us who voluntarily took our sins upon himself. On the cross, God's anger was poured on Jesus instead of us, all because of God's love. Jesus is our blessed hope, who is the only one who can give us eternal life, the hope of glory. He brings us comfort when we are hurting and sad. He encourages us when we feel down. Now let us hope fully and not partially, fully and not partially upon the grace of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For that is our blessed hope. Let us imitate the blessed hope that Paul is waiting to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better than anything we have known in this world. There is a heaven, and there is a home, and there is Jesus Christ there. That is our hope. Three months ago, our chief operating room nurse told me, Dr. Sam, you know what? I always want Christmas time. I said, why do you always want Christmas time? What makes you look forward for Christmas times? And she said, the flickering lights in the Christmas tree. What makes me look forward? Because when there is flickering lights that I see, it decreases our stress. Many of our staff are getting sick, but when I see the flickering lights, it decreases our stress. And then I told her, my 
Christmas is not about the flickering lights. Christmas is not about the Christmas tree. Christmas is not about the gatherings or the, the social or the parties that we have. Christmas is not about reunion. My Christmas is about a person. And that person is having that person in our hearts. That is Christmas. And Christmas is Jesus. And Christmas is having Jesus Christ in our hearts. Merry Christmas to everyone. God bless all of us.